thank you for the opportunity and thank you for the introduction. Uh, the scope of this uh, research uh, I will give you. Uh, I am professor and researcher at the law school uh, at University of Valle do Rio de Sinos, Unicinos. Uh, that is a university located in Porto Alegre in Rio Grande do Sul uh, in Brazil, which is the southernmost state in Brazil. Uh, since 2008, I have been developing research projects on the regulation of nanotechnologies, risk management, and the analysis of the social and environmental impacts uh, that could be generated with the growing human access to the nanometric scale. Uh, during this period, I have already supervised many masters and many PhD students in this area of research. Uh, I was the research advisor of the, for the PhD thesis by Patricia Santos Martins, who completed her doctorate early this year. Uh, the research problem that I uh, and Patricia are working now is uh, under what conditions can the in, in international standardization of organization, ISO, uh, technical standards be recognized by organization uh, that work with the nanoscale as alternatives for the regulated self-regulation in the development and application of nanotechnologies, uh, especially given the absence of a specific normative structure uh, like uh, this in Brazil. Uh, our main hypothesis is it is probably that technical standards can serve as regulatory interfaces informing the area of law that nanotechnology development can be regulated based on compliance with the principles of technical standardizations that are consistent with the principles of law, human and fundamental rights already defined in the federal constitution and other international documents on human rights and in force here in Brazil in a lot of other countries so. I am a stakeholder of the Gracious Consortium and the technical information about nanoparticles I have learned from the Gracious Consortium Research Group and service to understand the possibilities of regulation. Uh, the Gracious project has taken existing information, methods and regulatory provisions and used them to identify what is required required from a framework that will support grouping and read across of nanoforms. I think here is an important issue to underline because the gracious framework for my research projects aims to support the decision making, spanning regulatory risk assessment and safe innovation safe by design of nano enabled products. I think the read across is typically used in a regulatory setting that is similar to uh, the establish of regulatory environment. Uh, thought is also relevant for safe by design. The required level of detail of information on safe increases at, uh, as the stages of product development progress. Furthermore, when read across can be applied for one or multiple endpoints, this may lead to more cost efficient gathering of information for regulatory registration before market launch. It may be possible, therefore, to anticipate the regulatory application of read across and early in the development progress so that less resources may be needed for information gathering for subsequent regulatory approval. Uh, I think uh, in this situation, uh, especially uh, we must uh, learn about the safe by design, uh, especially uh, because the portfolio management tools such as gate, stage gate, aim to stopping the innovation process if there is an acceptable compromise in, for example, profitability or second technical probability of success, and the third point, the commercial probability of success and the fourth and or all risks or uncertainty regarding risks. Especially about the NanoRack safe by design concept proposed a screening strategy to identify and characterize risk associated with nanoforms at early stage of innovation. I think especially to develop, for example, 
uh, the demonstrators of risk. And here uh, is a window, I think, of opportunity for a real regulatory test in the scope of the sandbox regulatory or the regulatory leaving lab, as we will be seeing later. Uh, in question, uh, why is the risk issue important? I, I think uh, uh, we found uh, numerous examples of risks that were broadly recognized only after market introduction of new products or technologies, often neglecting early warnings. If, if there is any doubt among the public about safety aspects, acceptance, acceptance and implementation of new technologies in society can be seriously hampered and thus potential benefits may be not fully uh, realized. Example of such, for uh, this situation of the contested, uh, contested technologies are the genetically modifying organisms, the genetic technology, uh, to name a few examples. So there uh, should be not market or consumption without the definition of risks and regulation. This is a question or this is uh, a, a big question, a big situation. What will be uh, the acceptable level of a no? Why do we change the order of the factors? Until the emerging, for example, of the nanotechnologies, a new product could only enter the consumer market after testing on the safety of its ingredients and the development of regulation. With products based on nanomaterials or nanoparticles or nanoforms, everything is different as there is not yet a good margin of certain about the safe uh, of many of these materials, but the products reach the consumer market in increasing volume. Because of this situation, my research project uh, proposed to establish uh, a regulatory contest or, or a regulatory environment, uh, because there are several uh, non-governmental actors among which are organizations working at the nanoscale. And uh, according to Baker, uh, regulatory power is increasingly uh, exercised by autonomous non-governmental organizations, ALDOT, not of legislative origin in the legally accepted sense, the asserted regulatory power was now confirmed within the framework of the institutionalized and autonomous systems that uh, perform state functions outside the state. Because of this situation, I think the growing degree of regulatory fragmentation in contemporary global governance is a phenomenon that occupies many scholars of law, international relations, and sociology who study its causes causes, consequences, and responses. Fragmentation refers to the notion of distinct institutions and regulatory arrangements that coexist and operate in the global governance of nanotechnology. I think these uh, are a lot of, of situations and we are working now uh, with, for example, the, the precautionary principles. And we have some questions to, to answer with this, uh, uh, with this research. For example, how to regulate this scenario of nanotechnology innovation? When to regulate? And what is the best source of law to use in regulation? These are some issues that the research problem intends to highlight. I think these situations bring the content of the dilemma of control according to David Poligrich in, uh, in his book uh, entitled The Social Control of Technology. Uh, according to David Poligrich, uh, this dilemma can summarize it uh, in, in, the, in, in the following way. Attempting to control a technology is difficult and not rarely impossible because during its early stage, when it can be controlled, not enough can be known about its harmful social consequence to warrant controlling its development. But by the time these consequences are apparent, control has become costly and slow. I think this is a, a dilemma, and this is uh, one of the, 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 the proposal of our uh, research. And 
uh, we have working of a lot of uh, structure, uh, theoretical uh, uh, text about this, because how we must uh, answer uh, how understand social and normative metamorphosis. Our research is structured on same theoretical reference, which structured our practical proposal. For example, uh, according to Klaus Schwab, understanding is facing challenges. This is, I think, important. And according to Benoit Friedman, there is theory, theoretical possibility of normative hybridization. According to uh, uh, the, the German uh, jurist, Ginter Teubner, there is an efficient network of normative production by different actors. And here are located the uh, ISO technical standards, considering the production of the technical committee 229 and the ISO number uh, 31,000. Uh, because we must uh, offer the possibility to promote a dialogue between the sources of law. The International Organization for Standardization uh, is an independent non-governmental organization with a membership of uh, 162 national standards bodies. Through its member, the ISO brings together experts to share knowledge and develop voluntary consensus-based market-relevant international standards that support innovation and provide solutions to global challenges. Especially the, the, the 31,000 norm uh, of ISO uh, from 2018 provides more strategic guidance than ISO uh, 31,000 from 29, uh, 29, uh, 29, and places more emphasis on the bot, the involvement of senior management and the integration of risk management in the organization. This includes the recommendation to develop a statement or policy that confirms a commitment to risk management uh, assigning authority, responsibility, and accountability to the appropriate levels within the organization and ensuring that the necessary resources are allocated to management, uh, to managing the risk. I think we need uh, to establish a trusted environment uh, for the development of the, uh, of the innovation. And another point that we are studying now is the, uh, the regulatory preparedness, because the regulatory preparedness refers to capacity of regula regulators, including policymakers, to anticipate the regulatory challenges posed by emerging technologies, such as nanotechnology, particularly human and environmental safety challenges. This requires that regulators become aware of and understanding innovation sufficiently early to take appropriate action and that appropriate regulatory tools are modified or developed as needed. I think here uh, we are working now uh, with the seven trust drivers of emerging tech governance that are developed by uh, Sweteman and Hernandez et al. And was uh, uh, the article was published in Nano Impact uh, from this year in the volume 21. And the title of the article is Modernizing Innovation Governance to Meet Policy Ambitions Through Trusted Environment. And I think uh, the, the seven trust drivers that Sweteman Hernandez and all at all uh, underline are the public interest intent the competence, the respect, the integrity, the fairness, the openness, and the inclusion. And I think uh, these uh, seven uh, trust drivers, we can connect to uh, other uh, aspects that I find in my research uh, to uh, work with the three principles for the regulation tomorrow. One of these is the data-driven regulatory intervention. In, uh, so to establish the regulation in, uh, for these new technologies, uh, some uh, uh, the nanotechnology, we need a lot of data, data about the, the safe, about the risks and so on. And the second aspect is a principle-based approach. And I think here, such as the constitutional principles found in the federal constitution of each country, 
and the structuring principles related to the topic of human rights found in the international documents and in the decisions of international courts that judge and apply international standards on the human rights. And I think that the, the third point for uh, these new aspects about regulation is the development of the minimum regulatory sandbox. What is a regulatory sandbox and why introduce one? Uh, at the most basic level, a regulatory sandbox create an environment for businesses to test products with the less risk of being punished by the regulator. I think here we have uh, 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 an important uh, aspect uh, and uh, the question is why the sandbox? Maybe a laboratory to test the regulation of nanoforms. Although the contest for creating the sandbox framework has been the fine tech area, its objectives apply to developments from nanoforms, especially by the enabling a real scenario, but smaller, simulating real world for testing regulatory structure of nanoforms before their broader use. I think is an inter interdisciplinary real regulatory test space. At this point in the research, uh, a regulatory sandbox uh, is being structured at the Unicinus Technology Park. Uh, I think uh, uh, recently in, in some uh, publications, especially, especially in Nature and especially uh, about uh, the COVID-19, uh, we see underlined uh, the research uh, about uh, the, the work, uh, the people uh, about science, technology, engineering in maths, the STEAM, despite it being clear from the start that human behavior, motivation, and culture were key the effective response. I think Ficor, uh, this is uh, uh, the, the environment uh, to uh, work together, the shape areas, the social science, the humanities, the arts of people and the economy, and here is the law. Uh, discipline uh, help us to understand uh, the, the, the environmental uh, aspects uh, that work together, the steam and the shape come together. This is an example for research and advances in regulatory environment for nanotechnologies. Therefore, it is proposed to build interdisciplinary framework that aim to incorporate the results of the STEAM areas, which should be combined with the research of the CHAPE areas. And here, therefore, the basis for the necessary advance in regulatory science, which must be necessary interdisciplinary. And we are working now uh, to develop a framework uh, about a lot uh, of research, uh, especially in the web of science and the Google Scholar uh, to uh, establish the level, uh, combining the relevance and the reliability in, in the middle way, the adequacy of the establish of the regulatory purpose. And uh, this model is in preparation and which can be tested in other real spaces. And uh, I am available to receive anyone interested in receiving this application in their laboratory or other organization to evaluate the normative roads opening by the crossing the technical committing 229 guidelines and the ISO 31000 standard guided by the seven trust drivers for the emerging tech governance uh, that we I uh, uh, underline early. Uh, thank you for for the attention and I available for for questions. Uh, I will write my email in the chat and reviews and suggestions are very welcome. Thank you.